LT stream regularly shifts positions within its valley bottom while interacting with its floodplain. This is essential to the habitat, helping ecosystems be more resilient when faced with disturbance events. Meanders in the channel are like the brakes on the water train. Unfortunately, many streams in eastern Washington have become like racetracks, where the water simply rushes through, and then it lacks what's needed to create beneficial streamside vegetation and channel complexity. As a result of this damaged habitat, summer steelhead populations, which are recognized by the Endangered Species Act, have dramatically decreased in the region. Many local landowners are looking for creative and cost-effective solutions to restore their habitat and aid in the recovery of steelhead. In 2006, the Snake River Salmon Recovery Plan was initiated to research and develop efficient strategies for recovering steelhead populations in the region. Simple, hand-built strategies called Low-Tech Process-Based Restoration, or LTPBR, were developed to address a lack of habitat in Asotan County streams. These LTPBR strategies harness the power of the watershed by installing in-channel wooden structures that mimic natural log jams, which slow, shunt, or split the water flow in streams. And by adding some complexity to the channel, we help keep water in the floodplain longer and that enables the ecosystem to begin healing itself. In other words, we let the system do the work. Post-assisted log structures, or PALs, can be installed by hand. They're a part of a low-tech process-based restoration strategy that actually uses the natural processes of the stream to do the work. And so we can get a crew of young people in here with strong backs and minimal equipment, and we by hand install each of these structures within the stream. This is an example of a debris jam, and this is one that successfully split this main channel in this degraded stream into three separate channels. It reactivated the whole floodplain out here, which is exactly what it was designed to do. Low-tech restoration strategies have been around since the 1930s, but have gained momentum in the last 10 years as an effective, low-disturbance strategy to restore steelhead habitat. Dr. Stephen Bennett with Utah State University and Ecological Research was hired to develop a large-scale habitat and fish monitoring experiment in Asotan County, known as an Intensively Monitored Watershed, or IMW. So the goal of the Asotan IMW is to test the effectiveness of PALS at improving stream habitat and increasing juvenile steelhead production and abundance. We also hope to use the lessons learned from this project to improve restoration in other similar watersheds in the Pacific Northwest. So we built over 700 PALS in a Soaking Creek, and so far we've learned that the PALS are quick to build, low cost, and have limited damage to their existing riparian. They've also improved the complexity of stream habitat, creating off-channel habitat, places for fish to feed and get cover from predators, and improved spawning habitat. Most importantly, we've seen an increase in abundance of up to 50% in the restored areas. Scientific assessments are used to prioritize habitat restoration areas and determine what types of habitat elements are missing. PALS structures are built using basic natural materials like small trees and untreated wood posts. Then they're installed according to site-specific opportunities. Different types of PALS, such as channel spanners, mid-channel PALS, or bank blasters, can be used to achieve habitat objectives like creating a pool, releasing sediment, or forcing water onto a dry floodplain. This is one of the structures that we installed in 10 Mile Creek back in 2020. And this is a mid-channel PAL, which is something that was designed to kind of reroute the channel here. It was really locked in and it was really shallow. This structure actually forced the water to go around it. It created a pool behind it and it's also cut a whole new part of the channel. Within a year, we also have some willows that were collected in a high flow on this PAL structure, and those willows are now sprouting all on their own. This is a really good example of how we let the system do the work here. PALs are dynamic structures which collect additional debris with fluctuations in stream flow. They're not meant to be permanent, and some may be breached or lose some of their wood, but their lost materials will accumulate downstream into other PALs or natural log jams. 
Successful structures should be fed additional wood if needed to maintain their benefits into the future. Eventually, the system will become self-sustaining and create its own log jams when the riparian areas fully recover. Potential risks to ecosystems and infrastructure are considered throughout the entire process. This is a really good example of one of our channel spanning PAL structures. One of the ways that we know that this structure picked up a bunch more debris is because we do very intensive monitoring. We take pictures before, during, and after construction of each of the structures. Each of them have GPS points notated, as well as the number of logs and the number of posts that were installed in each of them. We come back multiple times during the season, especially after some high flow events, and that way we can tell if structures are being effective or causing damage. We have an adaptive management plan in place, so if one of these structures starts to do something that we don't think is beneficial for the ecosystem, we can take it out or modify it to make sure it's safe. The Asotan County Conservation District is partnering with landowners and funding sponsors to continue supporting steelhead recovery by implementing these low-tech process-based strategies. The district will assist local landowners and agricultural producers with habitat restoration for steelhead and other species of concern, as well as provide technical assistance for conservation practices. For more information about PALS, low-tech restoration strategies, or programs offered by the Asotan County Conservation District, please visit our website at www.asotancd.org.